In this video, I want to discuss resonance. Um, in mathematical terms, this is what happens when the inhomogeneous term becomes a solution of the homogeneous equation. Here, um, in physical terms, uh, we start with an equation for a simple harmonic oscillator, x double dot plus omega naught squared x equals zero, and add to it a forcing term, f cosine omega t. So the frequency omega of the forcing term uh, may be different, or here it is different, than the frequency, the natural frequency of the oscillator. And we want to ask what happens to the solution as the frequency of the forcing term approaches the frequency of the uh, oscillator. So we're going to solve this equation as we solve any uh, second order linear uh, <coughs> inhomogeneous equation with uh, constant coefficients. We're going to first find the uh, homogeneous solution. Right, so the solution of x double dot plus omega naught squared x equals uh, zero. This one, the solution should be obvious. Um, the second derivative is equal to the negative of the function times a constant. You should automatically think sines and cosines. We can see that with the ansatz, x equals e to the rt. We end up with the characteristic equation r squared plus omega naught squared equals zero. So r squared is equal to the negative of a positive number, which is why it's written as omega naught squared. So that r is pure imaginary, plus or minus i omega naught. And then the solution of the homogeneous equation is just a constant. Since it's pure imaginary, it's cosine omega naught t plus another constant times sine omega naught t, which you should have been able to guess immediately from the form of the equation. So the next step then in this solution method would be to find a particular solution. And uh, we can do that by um, converting to a complex equation. So instead of if z is x plus i y, then we can write the equation for z as z double dot plus omega naught squared z. And then cosine omega t is the real part of e to the i omega t. So that would be f times e to the i omega t. Where so here x is equal to the real part of z. So this is two, two equations, one for the real part of z, one for the imaginary part of z. And the equation for the real part of z matches the equation we're trying to solve. <coughs> so now we have an exponential uh, inhomogeneous term. So we can try z equal some constant and we match the e to the i omega t. Um, when we substitute in the second derivative then will bring down an i omega squared. So that will be a minus omega squared. So we have minus omega squared c times the exponential which will cancel plus omega naught squared c equals f, canceling the exponential. That becomes an algebraic equation for c. So that c is equal to f over omega naught squared minus omega squared. And then x, or our particular solution for x, is the real part of z, real part of c, which is re happens to be real in this case times uh, e, to the, e to the i omega t, so that will be a cosine omega t. So we have an f cosine omega t over omega naught squared 
minus omega squared. So then uh, putting together the homogeneous and the um, particular solution, we get x of t is equal to a cosine omega naught t plus b sine omega naught t plus the particular solution, which is f cosine omega t over omega naught squared minus omega squared. Okay, then the final step, this would be the, the uh, third step, is to write the solution as the uh, homogeneous solution plus the particular solution. And then we need to satisfy the initial conditions. <coughs> so we have uh, x of 0. Well, first we should find the, the derivative, right? Because we need to satisfy x of 0 and x dot of 0. So x dot of t using the uh, chain rule and the derivative of the trig functions is minus omega naught a sine omega naught t plus omega naught b cosine omega naught t uh, plus minus sorry minus uh, omega f sine omega t over omega naught squared minus omega squared. So we satisfy the initial conditions. So x of 0 is supposed to be x naught. Uh, a cosine 0 is 1, sine 0 is 0. So we get an a plus f over omega naught squared minus omega squared, which tells us that a is equal to x naught minus f over omega naught squared minus omega squared. Okay. Now the second initial condition, x dot of 0 is u naught. So sine is 0, cosine 1, sine is 0. So we get omega naught b, which tells us that b is equal to u naught over omega naught. Then uh, putting this together into uh, x, we then get x of t is equal to a, which is x naught minus f over omega naught squared minus omega squared times cosine omega naught t plus b u naught over omega naught sine omega naught t plus the particular term cosine f cosine omega t over omega naught squared minus omega squared. Okay. So this is the uh, solution, satisfies the initial condition and the uh, um, differential equation. Now we want to know what happens at resonance. So what happens when the frequency of the forcing term, omega, approaches the frequency of omega naught? So we have omega naught squared minus omega squared. So this denominator goes to 0. So we're going to get an infinite term here. But this denominator here, we also have an f over omega naught squared minus omega squared here. That term denominator also goes to 0, so we get another infinite term. So we have an infinite term plus an infinite term, and we must expect that they're going to cancel. So they're both proportional to f, right? Remember, this is the homogeneous solution, this is the particular solution, but a piece of the homogeneous solution uh, is proportional to the forcing that shows up in the inhomogeneous term. So we should collect these two pieces together, and we have an x of t then is equal to an x naught cosine omega naught t plus a u naught over omega naught sine omega naught t plus a f, and then we have a cosine omega t 
minus a cosine omega naught t divided by omega naught squared minus omega squared. Okay. And now we see that when we substitute in omega equals omega naught, we end up with a zero divided by zero. So we need to use L'Hopital's rule. So we have the limit as omega, the forcing frequency goes to the natural frequency of cosine omega t minus cosine omega naught t over omega naught squared minus omega squared is the limit as omega goes to omega naught. We use L'Hopital's rule. We need to differentiate with respect to the variable that is being limited. So differentiate with respect to omega. The derivative of cosine omega t with respect to omega is minus t sine omega t. The derivative of cosine omega naught t with respect to omega is zero. There is no omega there. The derivative of omega naught squared with respect to omega is zero. The derivative of minus omega squared is minus two omega. And taking the limit here, the minus sign cancels. We have two sine omega naught t divided by two omega naught. Therefore, at resonance, right, we have the limit as omega goes to omega naught of x of t. The limit of this will be x naught cosine omega naught t plus u naught over omega naught sine omega naught t plus the limit of this term, which is plus t sine omega naught t over 2 omega naught. So at resonance, what we see is that the particular solution now, this is the homogeneous solution, cosine, and the homogeneous solution, sine. The particular solution now has been changed. So the particular solution has become a combination of the previous particular solution and homogeneous solution to become a new particular solution, which is t times sine omega naught t. So this is the new, the new piece, the t there. The, when the, the, the mathematical message here is that when the inhomogeneous solution, when the inhomogeneous term is a solution of the homogeneous equation, then for your ansatz, you need an extra multiplication by t. Okay? Then to conclude, what resonance looks like, so at resonance, if we look at an oscillator, right, then we start off maybe, this is x, this is t, start off with small oscillations, but the oscillations will grow in time. Right, so that this will grow linearly as t. The envelope will grow linearly like t. So at resonance, you end up with larger and larger oscillations as time passes.